Yes. It's not alive. You're alive. <laughs> My dancing hasn't gotten any better. Is there anybody on? Oh, one person. Four. 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 Yay! <laughs> I can't see who it is. Anthony Davey. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Gemma, hi Gemma! Keeping me gone. Hello everybody! We'll give you five minutes to get organised. Get all your ingredients out. Get your recipe ready, wash your hands. Get your aprons on. And then we'll get started. Mexican week again. Fajitas. This was a firm favourite. We put a vote out for everybody to decide and give us some ideas and fajitas came up tops. So this is, will be a good one. We're also going to show you how to make um, a homemade guacamole. The recipe should be posted. So if you have the ingredients and you want to join in, then you can join in with Derek and I. Or you can save it for another day. Whenever you're doing your fajitas. I will die. Try another day. Um, if you want to heat up your wraps in the oven, uh, just preheat it to about 150 degrees. You don't need it too hot. That's the, the oven. The not, oven. Not the oven. The oven. <laughs> oven. We've got sienna. We've got all the Sutherlands. Okay, Sutherlands. We've got Tanya Brook. Gemma, Debbie, everyone's on tonight. Woohoo for fajita night. Fajita. Oh yes, it's fajita night. And the feeling's right. Oh yes, it's fajita night. Oh, Stephanie Mackey is loving your apron, Caddy. Thank you. Homemade by Lorna. Totally in from a sloth fun. Oh, <laughs> my bad. I think <laughs> we might need a bit of water. Oh, I thought it was gin. Do you want me to get you some gin? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Only got vodka, sorry. Alright guys, we'll just get started. So if you picked up a recipe pack from us, you will have the recipe in front of you. If you didn't, then it is posted on our Facebook page or you can join in with me. So the ingredients that we have today are two chicken breasts. We have a pepper. You can choose any colour. I have red. Derek has yellow. Uh, an onion, a couple of cloves of garlic, and a spice mix. So if you got one of the recipe packs, the mix has come all in one. But in your spice mix, you've got a tablespoon of paprika. You can use normal paprika or smoked paprika. You've got a tablespoon of ground coriander and two teaspoons of cumin. One thing I'm going to do, because I do like it a little bit spicier, I'm actually going to add a little bit of chilli powder. Or you can add fresh chilli if you want. And then you will have your tortilla wraps. Um, we're going to add some cheese as well. And then of course we're going to make our homemade guacamole. So it's pretty easy to make. So we've got one avocado, which is nice and ripe. We've got a tomato, lime, onion and a chilli. So we're going to get started. Can we have you try it with sparse? We can. We've got Zed. Hi Zed. He's doing this cook along with his mum Lorraine. Nice. Jacqueline says that you are having a no-nonsense cook along today. Carrie. No what, what do you mean by that? <laughs> you sound like you're having one. And um, Brooke is saying hello. She's adding mushrooms, red and green peppers. Oh, very tasty. Got a hello from Leah. Hi. We've got your cousins, Mara and Sonny. Sonny. Oh. Hi. Hi. Oh, that's so cute. And we've got that's all for now. Excellent. So the first thing we're going to start with is our chicken. Uh, you want to slice the chicken into thin strips. Try making them all the same size so that they cook at the same time. Just a little reminder that chicken is raw meat, so keep it very well away from all the rest of your ingredients. So we're just going to dice 
or slice the chicken and then put it into a large mixing bowl. Just taking off any of the fatty bits as well, just chop them off. These are huge chicken breasts. West London is looking forward to your thinky upy couple. Oh great. As a lot of people, if it's all the West London. <laughs> <laughs> We're very oh. popular here. <laughs> Guys, don't forget to send us in some of your photos as well. We love seeing your photos. Wow, these new knives are so sharp. I don't think it's as sharp as yours, Derek. Pardon? I don't think my new knife is as sharp as yours. <laughs> Should you wash the chicken before you um, slice it? Um, food hygiene says you shouldn't wash chicken. Ooh, um, it doesn't change any of the bacteria on it and it actually spreads the bacteria around your kitchen rather than uh, helping to clean it. Zed is using scissors. Oh, good thinking. To cut the chicken. That is good thinking, especially for kids if you're cooking yes. with children. Definitely. We quite often use scissors when we're doing cooking classes, don't we, Harry? Yep. Sarah Jane is saying this is our favourite dinner ever. Oh, great. It did come up very popular in the... in the, uh, votes for what we had. Certainly did. to get along and get a recipe bag then they can catch up and watch it again just call to the pantry anytime between 11 and 1 so my chicken is diced Talia is here Slice. she's lost diced. track of time but she's on now oh great it's not like Talia <laughs> I'm just going to wash my hands just because it is a raw meat. Oh, somebody suggested mince and tatties. Mm. Mince and tatties? Oh, I love mince and tatties. <laughs> I think we're all excited for our weekly segment of Derek's Fact of the Week. That, that will come in a little while. Whoa! I'm gonna have to wash my hands as well. Derek actually hasn't told us already in his back, <laughs> so we're all waiting and suspense. We are very excited. So if everybody has their chicken diced and their hands washed, sliced diced, <laughs> and it's in a big bowl. Next we are going to just add a tablespoon of oil. You can use any oil. We are using olive oil. To the pan or on, on to, into the chicken. Into the chicken, into your bowl. We're going to try and let this marinate a wee bit just to get some of the flavours right into the chicken breast. And then with your spice mix, you're going to add half of it into the chicken. So I'm just going to sprinkle about half in. And then you're going to save the other half for the rest of your fajitas. And then you just want to give that a good stir. And then make sure all the chicken's coated. It smells divine. It does. You can prep this in advance. So if you know that you're going to have a busy day ahead or you'll be busy and not able to have enough time to prep your dinner. You could do this the night before 
and the chicken will get even more flavour. So that's my chicken all covered. I'm just going to set that to the side and then start with the rest of my ingredients. So just going to start with the garlic. I'm just going to finely dice that. If you were given a recipe pack then it'll be already skinless but in some of the other weeks I mentioned that if you have trouble taking the skin off just crush it a little bit under your hand. I'm going to chop my garlic quite small just so that all of it gets the flavour. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get another knife please? Like a shorter one? garlic crusher that makes things a lot easier. Let's see. Thank you. If you're doing a vegetarian recipe, some of the things I recommend is adding mushrooms, you can add sweet corn, um, another good source of protein is beans, so things like kidney beans or butter beans, these are a great source of protein, especially if you're missing out on the chicken. You can also add the beans to the meat based fajitas because it just bulks them out. Onion. You can use any colour of onion, we've got white. So just peel in as much of the outside skin off as you can. And then you want to cut the top of it off. This is the easiest way that I find. So that you've got your flat surface. And then cutting down through the root and then taking off whatever layers that you need to make sure you're left with the fleshy part. I'm going to cut mine into rings. Rings? I'm going to cut yours. Um, half rings. Half moons. If it's going into a fajita, I think I'll, I'll do mine chopped, I think. Then, Shall I? Yes, if you want. Finely chopped, what I mean is chop chop. So that you can still get a good bite of onion. Okay, so that's onion. Next, we're going to go in with the pepper, whatever colour. Just taking off the green stocky bit and then cutting down into the segments. Brooke's saying that it smells amazing already. Yes, Good. absolutely right. Just the spices alone add so much flavour to it. I think it's the cumin. Yep. Especially if you use smoked paprika. Definitely adds a... So Zed finds that if you run onion under cold water, it doesn't make it ice water. <gasps> that nice. is some tip! There you go. That is a good tip. We'll need to try that. Thankfully my onion isn't too... Bad. I got a good tip the other day there, but it wasn't about cooking, right? What was it? It's for all you dog walkers, like I've got a Springer Spaniel, okay? Mm -hmm. And when I take my Springer Spaniel out in the, in the winter in the snow, its paws get covered it's and solid. ice cold stuff. The so whisk? No! Oh, coconut is... oil! Oh, right. You just melt some coconut oil and put it on their paws and it stops the snow sticking to their paws. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. And I've tried it and it works. Even better. That's how I always see it. It's like the snow whenever it puts in their fur. Every dog's got his like full body snowsuit. <laughs> we definitely needed it last week. I needed the snowsuit last week. So my little friend Alf is watching as well. He's Hi, cooking Alf. along. Great. Excellent. 
excellent. How many they helped us at lunch club last week? Left with 25 whole people. Excellent. Okay, so that is all our vegetables chopped. We're going to go ahead and start with our chicken. So what you want to do is get your pan onto a really high heat. We sort of want the chicken not burnt, but definitely browned and crispy to get a good bit of flavour. And we get me two tablespoons and two plates, please. Are you about 800, 900? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice So you want to let your pan heat up. We've got it over high heat and then we're going to add a little bit more of oil to the pan. We have already got a little bit of our chicken, but just to make sure it doesn't stick. What we're going to do is cook the chicken in batches. So that means we're going to add it to the pan in little amounts and then take it out and set it aside. Thank you. So just add in another tablespoon of oil to your pan. And then just waiting for that to heat up a little bit more. If you're kicking with your children, this might be a moment for the adults because it is very hot. <laughs> so we're just letting that heat up in a little bit. I'm just going to go and get us some tongs or something. Tongs? Tongs. Tongs. Chinese mafia. Do you know what would be a good time for, Derek? Why, why? It might be a good lesson. time for fact of the week. Wow. Yeah, we're excited. I'm just, I'm too excited okay. about this. There are, there, are, there, are, there are actually two facts, okay? Oh, the whole whammy. It's a double, it's a double fact week, okay? Ooh, it's excited. a history lesson for this the children. This is because Derek missed out last week. A history lesson for the children. Fajita, the word fajita, was not introduced into the Oxford English Dictionary until 1971. Wow. Wow. But fajita, the origin of fajita is Tex-Mex. Now, for those of you who don't know what Tex-Mex means, it means Texas Mexican American. Oh, so it's a wow. mixture of them all. So it's a mix of them all. So we're not just Mexican. Uh, I've got a little fact sheet here. I have to write down. The first thing is the word fajita is a marinated strip of beef or chicken bro broiled, broiled, not boiled, broiled, and served with flour tortillas and various ingredients with along with it. But the interesting fact is the first evidence of a fajita <laughs> comes from. Mexican ranch workers living in West Texas working along the Rio Grande in the late 1930s and 40s and the workers were paid with meat as partial payment for their work done wow. and that is where fajita events came from. Well, that was, that's 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 that was my favourite fact so far. That was good. I like that one. Well done. It's very interesting things to take along. You learn something new every day. Chicken. So our pans are nice and hot, so we're just going to do it in batches. So just laying the chicken out. Oh, it smells good. It smells lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> they should invent smell TV. So we can experience it. Usually it's well coated. Maybe I use a bit more spice in it. How long should this take, Carrie, do you think, for chicken? It'll take probably three or four minutes each side because we do want it nice and crispy. You'll notice whenever you're cooking the chicken, because I know some people get quite afraid of cooking chicken just because 
they are. Uh, so you'll notice it'll go from like a pale pinky colour to a white. So to know that chicken cooked the whole way through it'll be completely white. And you shouldn't be scared of cooking chicken. A great way if you are a little bit nervous about cooking meat is to get yourself a meat thermometer. Yes. Probably one of the easiest ways. And it's looking smoky. I'm just going to turn it. I'll do my can home. <laughs> Another way I've seen people making fajitas is in the slow cooker. Ooh. Yeah, so it's great if you've got one of those at home and you're away at work or um, it's pretty much the same method. Except you need some water. I think we're gonna have to get Zayla here sometime because he has some hot fat. Is it? Some hot tip. Maybe we need a Zed back to the week. I know. So he is saying. Some hot fat. Zed. He's put in too much oil and his hands so he's using a bit of Zed to cook it up. That's interesting. Yes. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Brooks also sent me some pictures and it looks incredible. Great, I'm excited to see them. They're all making me hungry. You know. So we're just trying to get the chicken crisp on each side. And then once it's done each side, we're just going to take it out of the pan, put it on a little side plate and then do the rest of our chicken. What you don't want to do or you want to try and avoid is overcrowding the pan. If you put too much in the pan, it just means that the pan won't be as hot. It does. That's why I did that to work. It's spicy, though. Mm -hmm. It's very fragrant. See, I can see the difference already, Harry. You're a dedicated cook, okay? <laughs> Your chicken looks a lot better than mine. In this case. And I'm sure it's going to taste better. I'm a fajita connoisseur, possibly. No, I do enjoy fajitas. They are really great. Like, midweek dinner, if you just can't really be bothered. Yeah, it's, it's quick crisp. and easy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I actually always take mine. So, me and my mum always have, like, a roast chicken. Then the next day we use the leftover chicken, so that's a good idea. You could do that with any meat, like Derek said. It was beef or chicken, oh, wasn't it? Yeah, it was predominantly yeah. beef in the, in the Texan days, yes. Yeah. The, skirt, the skirt of the cow they use, the cheap cut the meat to make the heat up. I like yeah. the beef to heat up. Yeah. Yeah. They do a turkey breast now as well, that would be a lower fat option. Turkey's really affordable as well. Or you could do pork. And the, the other good thing about people that may be frightened of cooking chicken is they think they might not be cooked through enough. Yeah. Because it can be quite dangerous sometimes, yeah. chicken. Is you can you can boil your breast for yeah. ten, 10 minutes and it makes it nice and succulent. Yeah, and then, and then, it and, then and then cook it. My flatmates have done quite a lot. Boils the chicken. And of course you can use the water to stock. I'm sure I've seen somewhere and somebody has done haggis fajitas. Oh wow. I think there's a place in Edinburgh that does haggis fajitas. That's exotic. <laughs> Scottish exotic. These are smelling amazing. Can I just say? And of course, the chicken will still cook if it's resting, won't it? It will do. Plus, we're also going to add it back into the pan yeah. after we've cooked the veg, just to make sure it's nice and piping and hot.
All the children are having good fun doing all this because yeah. it is it's very very educational for them to be able to start cooking early in life. Definitely, it's definitely a lifelong skill that you keep with you. It's not just about cooking, there's a lot of motor skill required whenever you're using a knife or there's numerical skill whenever you're measure, using a measuring jug or following a recipe. There's a lot more to it than just... Yeah. Mother's Day is also coming up. So that would be a cracking idea for Mother's Day, yes. Mother's Day feast. Yeah, I'll certainly be doing it for my mum. And of course the other thing is good for the children is they can do some research on whatever they're cooking and find out all the information they need on it. Yeah, definitely. Maybe we should start doing that for next week. That people that join in, they can tell us a fact that they've yeah. learned about oh, them. Yeah. Yeah. Penny's saying this is the first time she's come along and just wow. Oh, hi, hi guys. Thanks for joining us. Oh, I'm chicken to an eyeball. And Nicola's showing Sienna the difference between cooked and raw chicken. Yep. So that she can tell the difference the next time. I know that's what happens in the morning. Bruce is asking, what does Sienna stand for? I'm not sure. It goes for here to for Derek, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I didn't read it. Did it fiery? Um, I didn't read it. Um, I can't remember, but if you go to Wikipedia, you'll see the word fajita, and I think it's something like skirt or. Oh no, I'll tell you what it is. It's, um, it's originally referred to skirt steak or the cut of beef for yes. food in the dish. Yeah. The origin word is coming from the Spanish word faja, meaning belt or girdle in That's English. It. Yes. The literal translation for fajita is little strap, like the. But yes. Yeah. Oh well. No. Very hot. Okay, so if you're following along with us, or if you're ahead of us, even better. Yeah. Uh, that's our chicken has just been cooked. I've got all these lovely flavours in my pan now, along with still quite a good bit of oil. So I'm just going to let my pan cool down a little tiny bit, and then we're going to start stir frying our vegetables. So I'm going to start off with the onions, and then adding in our peppers. Just 
just going to let that cook down for a little bit. Just while we're waiting, I'm going to quickly show you how to make a guacamole. While our peppers are cooking, your pan is like off them. So if you have an avocado, this is quite dangerous, so it might be good for adults to do it. You're just going to go round the avocado in a circle. There was a spate of injuries for yes, there was making guacamole or smashed avocado for a while. We're we're pulling out, like, the and then the and avocado it. hand or something. Yeah, it's it's so cool. And then you're just going to twist it, a beautiful avocado. Avocados are full of very healthy fats. They're great for your skin and your hair. Now this is the hard bit. <laughs> you need to be very careful. Is you want to take your knife and hit it into the seed. Just like, oh, I just it. <laughs> Maybe don't do. You don't want to do that. Angie says that she can smell it from here. So this is what you're looking for. Yes. What's well done, to Carrie. <laughs> Well what done, probably Kelly. happened is what happened. Well, the other way you can actually do is what I should have done. You can take a small teaspoon and just go around the side, and it saves children using knives. Basically. Even better. And then you're just going to get your spoon, go along the inside of your avocado, just skipping out all that lovely flesh. We're going to put this into this bowl here. Yeah. Okay. Delicious here. So I haven't added my garlic to the peppers and the onions yet, just because garlic burns quite easily. That's why I just wanted these to pick a little bit beforehand. Thank you. So what you want is half an onion, so just remembering the way I told you to cut it before. You want to dice it quite small, just because it's going into your avocado. Next year, you've got your holiday. Black mulling. Black mulling. You can use any colour of onion. Just dicing it really finely. I made this with one time and we actually use a blender for it all. Oh well. Cool. Yeah, just to make sure make that it's nice, yeah. It's a just preference, isn't it? If you like a chunky guacamole, then you can do it with a pork or cut chicken on that. No, I've got chicken on that. Alright. That's why I've changed. I should have changed the earlier. See. It's my fault. Alright, so we're gonna put that in there. Yeah, that's fine. 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 Yeah, that's got a big tomato, you can use cherry tomatoes or we had some big tomatoes spare. Just going to finely slice this as well. I think I'll probably only need half of this or a quarter. The other part of the tomato you could use and turn it into a fresh salsa. Yes. A couple of weeks ago, whenever we were doing the chili, we showed you how to make a salsa using tin tomatoes, but you can do exactly the same using fresh tomatoes. I've got a green chilli. I like spice, so I'm going to keep the seeds. If you don't like the spice, it's not actually the seeds that are overall very spicy, it's actually the white bit that holds the seeds. It's called the pith. So my chilli is quite big, so I'm probably only going to need half of it. Ooh, my peppers good. I'm going to do mine without the seeds. So make it a little bit milder. Yeah. Not a fan of the spice, Derek. I'm a fan of spice, but I... Depends what it's in. Yes. Yeah, because guacamole can be quite cooling. And to be perfectly honest, there are so many chilies on the market just now that you can use. If you want real spice without the seeds inside, go for a Scottish bon, what do they call Scottish it? Scottish bonnet. Scottish bonnet, and I tell you what, oh, yeah. lovely. Habanero as well. Love a habanero. Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah, that's good
We actually did a Mexican cooking course when I was back at home. My mum got us up for Christmas. And the guy had lived in Mexico. His wife was Mexican. And he came back to Northern Ireland to open a restaurant, an authentic Mexican restaurant. It's obviously quite commercialised now. And he showed us these chilies, which had a spice but not heat. It was really confusing. Oh. So whenever you you eat it, you put loads in and you smelt it, it smelt really spicy. But it was incredible, it was absolutely beautiful. Whenever you taste it. So next we're gonna put a lime. Chilies are one of the easiest things to like grow as well. Are they? Yeah. My yeah. dad yeah. used to yeah. grow them and we had jars and jars and jars full of chilies. Like and pickled them. one? Pickled chilies? Yeah. Oh wow. I can eat pickled in the jar. I can eat them at the jar. So just to get the most out of the lime, if you feel it's quite hard, it makes it a bit harder to juice it. So what I find is just rolling it on the table a little bit, just loosens all the flesh. And then we're going to use half a lime. You're way in front of me today, Carrie. No. You've been, you've been practicing this one. No. <laughs> Lime squeezed. Ooh. I'm going to have a lime accident. And then using a fork, I'm just going to mash it all together. If I eat guacamole, I like mine quite chunky. I like So I'm just going to mash it all together. Do you see if there's a potato mash um, Yeah, I think this bowl's actually a bit slidey. Lovely, nice smelling lime. Do you think this is something something that's good for extra ripe avocados? Yeah, definitely. If you feel like your avocados are just about to go out of date, I know there's like a certain window you can really use avocados. One minute they're fine, and the next yeah. are pretty ripe. Right. Maybe we should make a complaint to people bought them just now. <laughs> Them. I think it's because this avocado is a tad under right. Yeah. Again, it's difficult to cut. Even but old. it'll taste better. It is delicious. Okay, so my peppers and onions have cooked down a really good bit. They're actually starting to char a little bit, which adds even more flavour. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the garlic in. At this point, if you are heating your wraps in the oven, 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 whatever you pronounce it, just wrap them in a little bit of tin foil and then put them in. Or you can heat them up in the microwave, just 20 seconds. It makes it a lot easier. You have it. So just cooking the garlic off for around a minute. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of my chilli powder. And then also some more of my spice mix. I don't think I'm going to add all my spice mix because there seems to be quite a lot, yeah. but a this now. is excellent. This will store in your cupboard. It's something that you can make up in a little jar or one of these little pots, and it can be a go-to rather than going and grabbing a packet off the shelf. What's the difference between making it yourself and using like a fajita kit or something like that? So fajita kits, they are convenient, but like I mentioned, most most weeks. They are full of some preservatives. I'm just going to add a little bit of water. I feel it's maybe a bit sticky. If you need to, you can add a little bit of water to your <laughs> to your peppers and your onions because mine's a little bit sticky. So just with the the pre-bought fajita mix, um, they're usually quite high in salt, sugar. There might be some preservatives in there as well. 
at least with this you know what's in it and it is really easy to make and really tasty it's also a lot cheaper to just do it like that isn't it? it would be a lot cheaper because a whole pot of paprika cumin and coriander that'd probably be about three pound whereas a fajita mix alone can be about that yeah it's expensive so yeah right let's try this avocado <laughs> Avocado dance. Uh -huh. What's avocado one? Is that an avocado dance? Yeah, That's how I used to dance when I was a young boy in the discos. <laughs> you must have been quite the romancer when moves like that, didn't it? Bringing back your goose, Derek. Sienna is saying that he has a lovely, and um, they use the whole spices, the whole spice mix, and it still wasn't. Sienna. Ooh, Ooh, Sienna likes it hot. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my chicken back in. Get all, get all those lovely juices. And then I'm going to crank the heat up a little bit. One thing I actually like to do sometimes whenever I'm making fajitas is make like a Mexican sort of rice. Ooh. Make like a burrito almost. Uh -huh. So you pretty much just cook your rice, add some sweet corn, peppers, and then some paprika, chili powder. Mm -hmm. I think we, we, we have a lot of chicken. Okay. Well, for weeks. If we had more of the uh, chicken mixes or anything else that we could do with that? Yeah, one of our other nutritionists, Lisa, she actually made a fajita pasta. Ooh. It was delicious. We made it at one of the cooking sessions. Really easy to make. I'm sure we can post it onto our Facebook page and then you can all have a go at that. Yeah. The other thing I've seen is like a fajita lasagna. My mum's making that. Yeah. So I think you add chopped tomatoes to it just to make it like a little bit juicier. Anna, would you mind just putting them in the microwave for like 20 seconds? Don't keep them Yes, please. So we're just going to heat up our um, our tortillas. If you don't like tortillas, you could probably use like pita pockets. Yep. I've seen people use flatbreads, they're delicious as well. And also really easy to make flatbreads. Pretty much just need flour and water and a little bit of oil. Um, or you could just take, eat the beta mix with rice if you didn't like any of the breads. with a little bit of my avocado. You can 
add some of the homemade salsa that we made if you made it. Oh, oh looks delicious. Oh. And then the finally, fun. everyone knows I'm a cheese lover. I can't be without cheese. It's going to great. A little bit of cheese on the top. And then the best bit at the end is you get to eat it. So I will show you all my lovely creation. Oh, my battery's low. So this is my fajitas. I don't want it falling onto the floor. I hope everyone's enjoyed it. <gasps> Talia bought halloumi to put in it. Oh! oh. Talia bought halloumi to put in it. My fat Halloumi? Halloumi. The cheese, yeah. That's a good Slowly. idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. That could yeah. be another vegetarian recipe. I've actually made that without using like halloumi instead of chicken. Yeah, show your chicken. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going, going to show them. mine because you'll see the difference between. How, how do I do this? Uh, up, 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 up. Yeah, that's oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> now, Carrie's <laughs> looks a lot more professional and better because she's used red pepper and it makes the chicken stand out a bit more on your tortilla, whereas the yellow pepper blends in with the chicken, which I think doesn't look as good. That's if you're, you do eat with your eyes, I suppose. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed our Mexican themed week, Tex-Mex week, actually. Mm -hmm. How is it, Derek? Mm. Delicious. Delicious. Guys, don't forget to send us all your photos. Let us know how you got on and if What's you enjoyed next? it. What's next week? Recipe party? I don't think fish we've decided cake. yet. We were thinking possibly fish cakes, Thai mm. fish cakes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love fish cakes. Right? I love fish cakes. Yeah, we'll see. We'll maybe put a little vote up again, see what people mm -hmm. think. Get the crowd's opinion. Anyway, don't forget to send us your photos. We hope you really enjoyed it. Me and I know me and Derek really enjoy our cook along Wednesday. Yes, lovely. We love seeing everybody joining in, and it makes me really happy whenever we see your photos. And you let us know that you enjoy it. So we'll hopefully see you next week. Adios, amigos. Adios. Bye, guys. Thank you.